This is Darrington, Washington, a small logging community surrounded by rugged mountains on the western slope of the North Cascades mountain range. I was fortunate to grow up here. From the jagged peaks to the raging rivers, I was always interacting with the landscape. With over 90 inches of rain a year, this temperate rainforest can be brutal. This place builds a tough character. One that knows how to push through hard times, waiting for the clouds to eventually part, revealing the beauty that surrounds you. On top of that, it's one hell of a great place to ride a mountain bike. but none of these trails existed here. On March 22nd, 2014, a landslide covered 49 homes just outside of Darrington, claiming 43 lives. No bag, Can you request uh, Medic 7 respond from Shanty County to the Darrington side of this event? Medic 7, Medic 7, totally blocked with a, a slide. There is a uh, structure out in the middle of 530. We'll be investigating. 530 command. One was sent to the Darrington Clinic for your patient with an amputated arm. And to a reverse 911 for an evacuation of the area. And possibly downstream in case this thing lets loose and floods downstream. You advise on your end of the uh, slide there is a report of someone yelling for help. This is a major slide here. to the house on the two, out into the main road of 530. So. I'm just letting you know that we're hearing uh, cries, possibly a child. We're hearing more victims out here, and I've got a team of civilians and firefighters headed in to find them. I'm saying out one victim, appears to be about a six month old baby. We can uh, see across by Steelhead Drive, and the entire road has been washed out. All the homes. And still a drive are gone. <laughs> Eighteen million tons of debris was released from the hillside, wiping out everything in its path. It was this tragedy that sparked a change in the community, and one that would lead to the North Mountain Trails. My name's Dan Rankin. I've been the mayor um, of the town of Darrington since 2011. That day, you know, I was, I was on site down at Hazel, um, which would become known as the Oso Landslide. In about six seconds, um, we lost 43 of our community members. We lost children, we lost parents, we lost grandparents, we lost friends, um, we lost relatives. We lost 43 folks that were a part of our community. Because we were completely separated, we had no phone to the outside world, we had no internet to the outside world, we had no highway to the outside world. We operated in a vacuum. We were able to make our own, create our own destiny in those first few days. To push ourselves to levels that you'd never know. That you didn't think it were possible. We all worked harder for something that we all knew had to happen. And that was to bring our people home.
Those were the efforts that we made. And because of that momentum, because of that passion and the drive of our community and the people that were in the that, that re had responded to the slide, more and more people from all aspects of our society wanted to be a part of this. DNR steps in and says, how do we, how do we engage in this? How do we make sure that Darrington is not only good next year, but it's good 10 years from now? Embracing recreation, making recreation a part of their portfolio in the Darrington area. And that's when they engaged and said, this is cool, we're going to do this. And we're gonna put the funding in front of it to do it. I'm Oak Rankin, the executive director of Glacier Peak Institute. Uh, Glacier Peak Institute was founded after the 2014 Oso slide by the community in order to create a long-term change and difference in our community for the youth and for local ecosystems with the outdoors. Uh, so what we do with Glacier Peak Institute is work on helping the youth understand a relationship, a positive relationship with the outdoors. Uh, this has also led to mountain biking um, where we now have, as a result of the trails that are there, mountain biking right here in our community. I see mountain biking as a tool, um, one tool out of many of outdoor recreation to build that positive future and identity. Um, it could be mountain biking for one kid, it could be fly fishing for another, it can be rock climbing for a third, but mountain biking is definitely a piece of that that is really exciting. We see that passion coming out in these kids that a lot of them are struggling, and you see him like the awesome video, like the kids going, this is awesome. There we go. How was biking yesterday? It was awesome. I did some shots yesterday, and I crashed into a tree yesterday. Just cool stunts yesterday on the bike. It was so awesome. We've seen our youth and families start to latch onto that opportunity and start to form as part of their identity of going out and playing on the trails and building a healthy future through biking. Uh, my name is Luke Salen. I've been riding mountain bikes for four years now or something like that. Just love it. I can't get anything better. You know, the adrenaline is uh, just keeps me going. So I love it. I got into biking for the first time. We went on this Glacier Peak Institute trip. It was so awesome, you know, riding with like a group there. Um, and I just got addicted to it. Managed to get my dad into it too, so, you know, he can take me places and have fun with it too. He's definitely progressing as a rider and it's, it's really fun to ride with him and see him progress too. That first trip, I mean, to North Mountain here with uh, Glacier Peak Institute, you know, I didn't really know what to expect. There's not nearly as many people and so the trails are just so good, you know, and they're. It's so smooth and built really well. My name is Brian Connolly. I'm the trail boss, lead designer and builder here on North Mountain in Darrington with this new trail project for Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance. I've been working here on this job for over two years pretty much living here full time. There's all kinds of stuff out here. It's, uh, it's a real mountain. Everything that belongs here is here. It's a beautiful place. We've had uh, some partnerships with uh, like the Glacier Peak Institute, bring kids out to do some work parties and help out and get them involved in mountain biking. We've been you know, really involved with the local community through this whole thing and uh, we're really trying to get mountain bikers in and make a really positive impression on the town. Currently, the mountain biking community in Darrington is pretty non-existent. There just really wasn't any real opportunity in the past out here for mountain biking, um, but that's all changing and we're uh, putting in world-class trails that people are really digging and happy to see all the feedback and high fives.
building uh, resilience in a, in a rural setting, in a rural community, a remote rural community, um, continues to be um, about the community itself. We want folks to live, work, and recreate every day in our community. I'm Caden Yeckley, and I moved to Darrington this July, and it's been great ever since. Before I moved to Darrington, I'd be up here just about every day anyways. I just found myself always coming up here and exploring, and so it just made me want to make the move, be that much closer to the fun things to do. Yeah, one of the best things about North Mountain is it's just so close to my house. I can ride here from my house in five, six, seven minutes. Me and Rain like to come out here and she just has so much fun riding these trails. And I think sometimes she has more fun than I do. And she'll scrub the tabletops and stuff and the doubles and it's just hilarious to watch her come chase me down the hill. And when you get out here, you're separated enough from your normal life and from the city that you really don't have a choice but to just slow down and enjoy it. Yeah, mountain biking is definitely a passion I'll take with me forever. Like, it's something to keep with it for the rest of my life. Everyone asks me, like, why do you move out to Darrington it's so far away? What are you talking about? It's so close. I can do anything I want right from my doorstep. And what I see as the future of Darrington is identity continued around living with, playing with, um, and existing in the natural resources that surround it. To make this happen in a meaningful way that was about the community, was for the community, but for the rest of the planet, because this is not only a gift to Darrington, it's Darrington's gift to the world.